The crust is the outermost solid shell of any rocky planet, like the Earth. The Earth's crust is comprised of three different types of rocks, which we will hope to define in the second video. The Earth's crust occupies less than 1% of the Earth's total volume. Hopefully by the end of this lesson, we will, we will be able to explain what comprises the other 99%. In the next video, make sure to pay attention to, to the two main parts of the Earth's crust. The continental crust, where humans, animals, and plants live, and the crust that covers the ocean, where sea life and fish live. Next, we will describe the second layer of the Earth, called the mantle. The mantle comprises approximately 84% of the Earth's total volume. It is separated by the crust by the difference in density of the rocks that make up the crust and the mantle. Researchers believe that the mantle has a very strong effect on the type of atmosphere in the outer layers of the Earth. There are two main sections of the mantle, and hopefully by the end of the second video, you will be able to describe them. The next video is titled, Structure of the Earth. Write down these essential questions that you will answer by the end of the video. What is the most outer layer of the Earth called? Describe the characteristics and the two different parts of the Earth's crust. What kind of crust is most likely to be found in the Himalaya Mountains? Write your answer down now and compare it to the correct answer given in the video. Finally, explain the difference between the density and the two types of crust. Divide it into three important components, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The crust is the outermost solid part of the earth. It is brittle in nature. The thickness of the crust varies under oceanic and continental areas. Oceanic crust is thinner as compared to the continental crust. The mean thickness of the oceanic crust is 5 kilometers, whereas that of the continental is around 30 kilometers. The continental crust is thicker in the areas of major mountain systems. It is as much as 70 kilometers thick in the Himalayan region. It is made up of heavier rocks having density of 3 grams per centimeter cube. The type of rock found in the oceanic crust is basalt. The mean density of the material in oceanic crust is 2.7 grams per centimeter cube. The portion of the interior beyond the crust is called the mantle. The mantle extends from Moho's discontinuity to the depth of 2,900 kilometers. The upper portion of the mantle is called asthenosphere. The word asthenos means weak. It is considered to be extending up to 400 kilometers inside the earth. It is the main source of magma that finds its way to the surface during volcanic eruptions. It has a density higher than the crust, which is around 3.4 grams per centimeter cube. The crust and the uppermost part of the mantle are called lithosphere. Its thickness ranges from 10 to 200 kilometers. The lower mantle extends beyond the asthenosphere. It is in a solid state. Talking about the core, the final layer of the earth is called the core. The core is most commonly the title of the innermost layer of any planet. The earth's core comprises approximately 15% of the total volume. As compared to other planets, that are mostly solid, gas planets have much smaller cores. Some moons were found to have cores as well. The Earth's moon is the thought to have a solid core, just like the Earth. The reason that the Earth's core is so hot is because the active uranium that is comprised in the center of the Earth. The last video is titled, The Iron Core of the Earth. Explain the phrase in the beginning, our planet was born from fire, as described in the video. Explain how the earlier solar system differed with the current solar system known to man today. 
How many impacts is the Earth said to have as compared with the planets Mercury, Venus, and Mars? Finally, explain how the Earth formed its iron core. Four and a half billion years ago, the Earth was a very different world. Under layers of thick gaseous clouds was a planet still hot from its birth, with an atmosphere both dense and crushing. The early planet was probably only a tenth of the size that it is today. But it was to grow. And that chance and violent growth would prove crucial to life's history and to what we are today. The early solar system was far more crowded than now. Where today the four inner planets orbit, four and a half billion years ago were scores of smaller planets orbiting the sun. Orbits of some were drawn by gravitational force towards each other. Encounters of awesome magnitude were unavoidable. force and heat of those collisions melted the rock, but gravity would hold the two together and then weld them into one. With each collision, the planet would grow larger. We believe that of the four innermost planets, Mercury was formed by only one or two such collisions, while Venus, almost the size of Earth, was formed by eight. Mars may have escaped any collisions. But Earth grew largest, perhaps from as many as ten impacts. And the last impact, four and a half billion years ago, would have a profound effect upon our world. The giant body crashed into the center of the planet and gave Earth its iron core. The lighter debris was cast off into space and then drawn into orbit around the enlarged planet. For some millions of years, the Earth had rings like the planet Saturn. Smaller collisions continued, and from that debris was born our moon. 